Passion Tech Alliance involves higher education institutions, small, medium and big enterprises and the research center. This project has been co-founded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union and is aimed to facilitate knowledge exchange between partners and to design and pilot learning experiences to engage students in a Fashion Tech Residency program, embedding young talents in the company's innovation activities. A central objective of the project is to design multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary and intersectoral learning activities involving international students from five European universities. The contents of the lectures have been specifically created to match the needs of fashion tech learning. They have become open educational resources to allow future engagement between a European-wide fashion and textile HEI community and are available under Creative Commons Sharealike 4.0 with the aim of a wide and free distribution, access, use and reuse. Ready to learn more about fashion tech? Enjoy the lecture! Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this lecture on designing experiences and interactions. Um, my name is Alexa Polman. I am the subject leader for wearable technology at the London College of Fashion. Now, for today's lecture, I thought it's nice to start with an example of my own work, um, mostly because we are going to talk about um, designing experiences and interactions in the context of fashion, of course. And um, in, in that, I think, um, there's one work that I'd like to share with you that I've produced with my studio, Peu Porté, um, where we've really kind of looked at um, interaction and experience um, in form of a game. And um, the game is called uh, Wear and Seek. And it was an experience that we created for the design um, festival in London in 2017 and showed again um, at the um, Museum of London later on in 2018, but also at Fashion Clash Festival in um, the Netherlands. And I think what, what it really does is it gives you hopefully a sort of uh, inspirational beginning to this lecture. So um, here's a little video that I'm sharing and I'm going to talk over it to um, shorten our time. Uh, what, what we did in this project was that we really looked at how we interact with machines these days and um, how we are being watched over by machines. So the project is very much a comment on our current surveillance um, climate. But also um, it looked mostly at how this will actually change uh, the way that we design. And that was one of the key questions because we did design for the human eye for a long time. Um, but uh, by now, of course, we are not only designing for the human eye anymore. And what you can see here is uh, we had audiences come into the uh, room of the exhibition where um, on, upon entry they were given a bib that they could wear themselves. And then they had various devices, um, augmented reality um, and heat camera devices that would allow them to view each other through a machine eye, basically. And um, it was a game because we basically um, used the garments as triggers that would trigger those devices. And so there was a second layer over the actual fashion material that the garment is that would become visible when you use these devices and not all of them would trigger those devices. So it was they had to um, wear the device and then seek for the overlay experience or information. Um, and I think, yeah, this was um, just a short intro to showcase that, of course, when we talk about interaction and experience, um, we really can, can open this up quite a bit in regards to how it could influence how we as uh, fashion designers work. Now, I'll go back to the roots a bit more with this one, because of course, both um, designing interactions and designing experiences became more and more relevant with um, technology entering our everyday lives. Now, you'd be um, surprised to see that this film, um, which was um, 
for, is from 1947, um, and it's called um, The Television, The Eye of Tomorrow by J.K. Raymond Millett. Um, it actually um, shows people interacting with what we would today call mobile phones. Um, and mobile phones didn't exist back then. So it's really uh, exciting to see how this film predicts these little moments where we are so focused on our phone that we don't actually realize what's going on in the world around us anymore. And uh, this prediction is, I think, something that uh, we as designers in general are quite good at doing. Um, but it's also something that introduces the idea of uh, human computer interaction, which is, of course, what we are going to talk a bit about. So um, it's kind of easy to understand that until the 1970s or the late 1970s even, uh, this discipline wasn't really necessary. So um, especially because uh, computers were only used um, by professionals who would know how to, how to use them. Now, um, with personal computing, of course, becoming some, something of an everyday tasks for everyone in our um, surroundings and ourselves, um, it became apparent that we really need to think about how people interact with devices and um, how their experience around devices will actually be one that is enjoyable, um, doesn't frustrate, um, and we all have this knowledge of technology. When it doesn't work, it really frustrates us. So the idea of interaction and experience is, of course, to a great um, part to, to ensure that we have a pleasurable ex experience or one that we maybe don't even realize we're having because it just happens. So, um, so much for this um, film. I think it's it sort of shows why there is a necessity for it, but also what its influence is on our everyday life now. And still, uh, I'm taking you on a bit of a um, journey back in time. Um, we can actually go even back even further. So this was a film, of course, from 1947. Um, as said back then, mobile phones didn't exist, but someone predicted them. Um, but if we go back even further, um, we can really look at how uh, interaction and experience design is something that, although we think of it today as something that we, we design only in the context of technical devices, uh, they have uh, existed for much longer. Um, and so I brought you these um, very old sort of wearable devices. Um, and I think it's quite clear what the one on the right hand does. It's a calculator. It's um, an abacus in form of a ring. Um, but the one on the left side, um, I often ask my students what they think it might be. One of the greatest um, answers to that was that someone thought it might be an early projector. I think that that would be really interesting. But really, it is a, a watch. It's a portable watch. And it was designed by Henlein. Um, in, oh God, when was it? Um, well, 2000, we, we are now in 2021, and I think it was pretty much about um, 500 years ago, so around 1500. So that just as a sort of intro to um, where we already saw devices being designed, and of course they have some form of interaction in them. Now, um, the one on the left um, is definitely one that I wouldn't know how to read, although, of course, it already has the, the shape the, that we now know from a watch being set in a circle, for example. Um, but uh, it's very interesting because although back then it must have had some, some logic to it on how it worked, um, of course, today it's harder for us to grasp how this might um, be read. Um, so in theory, um, we could consider this for today, at least a sort of not working um, user experience or interaction design. Um, although, of course, it's still a very pleasurable artifact. So that one would be an example for not well working. 
um, design interaction. The other one, of course, because it's so straightforward and we know the abacus, it's like, yes, this one would be one that we understand and therefore maybe be categorized as an example of good interaction design. So, moving into the here and now, I think what I want to focus you on to start with is that when you design interactions and experiences, um, you definitely focus on the user. And these two terms, user experience and user interaction, which have um, different forms of um, short language that I don't know why there are so many for UX and I'm sure there's actually more for UI as well. But I'll just put them there in case you ever have come across them and wondered. Um, but both of these terms are sometimes really used uh, interchangeably. And to some degree that is really um, easy to understand because they do overlap quite a bit. Um, and it seems also quite straightforward when you try to explain them. So, of course, user experiences are about the experiences we have around a product or um, how we engage with a product, whereas the interaction design part can probably more be focused on the direct interaction. And the experience is something that is going much um, broader in a way because the first time you um, interact with a product isn't necessarily the first time you experience it. Um, so um, I think that is my definition of the difference between those two, but as I said, they are overlapping and I think it's not necessary for you to really try and define them per se. Although I think helping your own um, kind of, well, project or product, um, it's good to have both of them in mind and, and sometimes ask yourself whether you are now designing an interaction or an experience. So when we go back into and try to kind of relate this back into fashion, though, I would say that um, there's something that I really want you to focus on, and that's that when you come from a fashion background, you have probably been asked before to um, consider um, a consumer or customer and you probably made a customer board of sorts and what you did in there is that you tried to imagine their surroundings their social standing um, their general lifestyle really and of course their interests and so you kind of picture the person that you're designing for you might even have put a name or an age group on there um, and so you gave them a sort of profile now, that is, of course, relevant, but within um, the UI and UX sector, what you do is really that you focus in on that consumer, on the every action, really. So um, someone is, you're less focusing on their background and more on the way that they use a product. Um, and I think that brings, it's sort of a more um, micro view um, it's, it zooms in, really. And I think that can be done in many ways um, within fashion as well. So if you consider um, designing, let's say, a jacket and um, you place your buttons and your buttonholes, um, you make sure that the buttonholes have a certain um, width so actually the button can fit through. That seems just logical, but at the same time, it also ensures that whoever wears the jacket will actually have an experience that is pleasurable or maybe even an experience that goes unnoticed. And that's okay because what it doesn't do is it doesn't annoy because if I can't fit the button through the buttonhole, I will probably not buy the jacket. And there's many more examples you could bring in this context, but this would basically show how the interaction with the jacket plays a big part. And therefore you have actually done interaction and experience design before, you just might not have put your focus onto it. And this brings us really to four steps that I would like you to consider for your design process going further. 
Um, so the first one, of course, is when we when we talk about technology, especially we are looking at the user, but we are also looking at the functionality. And for the uh, term functionality, um, it's it can be said that um, of course, it is something that would happen, for example, when you uh, design a device that is collecting bodily data, um, and that's just one example. Um, and it is something that is the function that then gives the whole um, product a reason to exist. But um, it's also a sort of step that we could consider as design engineering. Um, and in that context, it is, of course, giving your direction of your design a um, very specific um, outline. Um, that might be very different from designing a garment per se when you start. Although even in there, we can see quite a bit of engineering around fit and body. So you actually are working with data there as well. Now, um, the next step would be that you think about the wireframe. And wireframe is a big word, um, but it basically is a storyboard. Um, a storyboard, which is sort of the part of the design where you really start thinking about the person that uses or activates the device or the experience. So what is a wireframe? It is basically a two-dimensional um, outline, so it can be a sketch um, of a web page or an app mostly. Um, and it's basically the storyboard that makes you think through all the um, steps that the person using your product or device or experience will need to take. So um, in a simple way, it's a sort of step-by-step -step description of the different actions you need to take. Uh, be it pushing a button, swiping left or right, um, turning a device on and or off, and so on. Why is it important? Because it really gives you um, focus, again, on those um, interactions that you are actually designing when you design a product. Um, and this was sort of the zoom in. And then, of course, you can also zoom out a bit little a bit more. So um, that brings us to the user journey. In the user journey, it is really um, important to think about how um, your user has needs and pain points, if you want so. Um, so the point of this user journey is that you really understand user behavior you uncover sort of gaps in the user experience. Um, so when does your user see your product for the first time? Why does he or she or they see it? Um, and I think it is something where you really kind of see the product in the bigger picture of the life of your user. So, um, I think what, what I would like you to do here is get inspired by the idea that you can observe your user um, and their interaction with the device. And I think the other um, important um, part of this is that, again, it gives you a focus on interaction, of course, but also the overall experience. So um, is it overall an experience that you want to be um, a highlight or is it overall an experience that you want to actually be unnoticed so it kind of slots into our everyday um, so the confrontation basically that you allow your user to have with your product or experience is it high or low it also takes into account um, other um, contextual um, information, such as how often would your user actually interact with the product. Um, so it's more temporal as well. And then going further, uh, we come to the last um, but very important step, which is usability testing. So having planned out 
and thought through and designed all these um, previous steps. Of course, um, it is sort of a fiction in your head that you created. And what we normally do within fashion at this point is we produce a prototype and we then go to a fitting to see whether it fits, right? And there's multiple fittings usually. So it's quite similar within design interaction or um, designing interactions or experiences um, as if you now have your prototype and you give it to someone to see how they would use it. And that of course will confirm or um, direct your, your assumptions that you made basically in making your wireframe and your user journey. And it might mean that you have to go back to the drawing board. It might mean that you get confirmation, but it is one of the most important steps, of course. So um, you really can learn from the problems or the issues that the person that is using your device during their interaction with it has. Now, to sum it up, what we want to really focus on is to think about who are you designing for? And that is for me, in a nutshell, focusing on interaction and experiences. And the product is of course part of it, but it's, it's sitting within this context. Next, I thought it might be nice to also um, introduce you to this idea that we have moved from the information age into the experience age. And um, next to who you are designing for, um, you can open up the idea of what you are designing. Now, just as a sort of background here, the information age is historically an, a period that sort of began mid 20th century. And it's characterized by a rapid um, shift from the industry that was established by the Industrial Revolution um, to the economy that is primarily based in the information technology age. And the experience age, well, it is happening right now. And I think therefore the definition of it might be sort of fluctuating. Um, and I don't want to pinpoint it directly, but I think it really says, uh, says it on the tin. It really moves us away from um, this idea of, of connecting people um, through informational facts to connecting them through experiences. And so it also is um, maybe best described in an example that I've often read about in this context by looking at Facebook versus Snapchat. Okay, so in Facebook, you actually get quite a bit of text and profile and information that sort of sits there and stays there. And um, so it's really information heavy. Now within Snapchat, not only is your moment and the existing and experiencing in the moment, the main focus, it also um, gets rid of all this archival work in a way. So I think if, yeah, I think that those two are good to illustrate, but I have um, brought you another example a little bit later. Um, though I want to sort of go back to this question of what are you designing? And whilst for the longest time, we as designers have focused on a product, um, it really is, uh, I think, essential at this point to kind of um, broaden out and say, you might be designing a process. You might be designing a user interface. You might be designing a movement. So a physical movement, um, a body movement. Um, because as soon as I touch my phone, I move, right? Um, as soon as I get into my jacket, I move in a certain way. And how uh, beautiful would it be if we would actually start thinking about that as part of our design when we design a jacket. So you could design an action or an experience really. And there's many other ways that you can start thinking about this. And I think that's um, the beauty as well of this uh, field that um, you can come from a couple of different angles really. Um, now, 
here's one example I thought, <laughs> I find it quite hilarious in a way. Um, and I thought it's really nicely illustrating this experience age idea for me within the fashion context again. So this is from 2018 and um, it's the Coco Game Center. Um, it traveled through Asia and I think it was in Tokyo, in Singapore and in Hong Kong and Chengdu. And uh, it was a pop-up experience um, and one that was widely shared in the, um, in the social media. Um, and there were like, it was basically an arcade um, where you, you have uh, different games, um, such as a crane game, for example, um, where, and you could then get dressed in the brand's classic tweed um, and use one of these machines. And so what we see is really that shopping is getting more performance oriented. Um, and we've seen this for some years now. Burberry is one of the examples for that as well, um, who have done brilliantly in over the last two decades now and already. And of course, the, the uh, attached um, behavioral study to this would be um, game study, right? Because um, we as humans, we like to play. It's called homo ludens um, and um, gamification within shopping experience has definitely um, become quite an important driver for the industry. So just one example to kind of memorize the idea of the experience age. So this brings me to the end and I hope it's sort of a nice first primer into the idea of using designing interactions and experiences within the fashion realm. Um, I have a list of experiments that you can do at home to sort of start um, immersing yourself in this world and also to um, try and, and reset your brain to designing in them. Um, so I suggest that just surf yourself really if you're at home. Um, think about every interaction that you take, um, maybe in a certain amount of time. And um, how would you define these as interactions? But also maybe look just back at what you've done this week and what you would consider an experience within that week. And where there might be an experience that you haven't realized or where there might be one that you feel is maybe not necessarily also linked to technology, um, but try to define why or why not they are experiences. So for both of the above, I then also suggest to um, note them down. Um, and try to put them on a, on a scale, basically. I try to see whether they were good or bad, whether they were pleasurable or unnoticed, whether they were big or small, um, whatever you consider your scale to be. Um, yeah, that's um, all from me today on um, designing interactions and experiences. Um, I hope you learned and enjoyed this lecture. <laughs>